fixed cameras. Your successful completion of the demonstrated repair ultimately depends on the quality of your tools, the condition of your camera, and most importantly, your repair ability. First off, what is demonstrated in this video will apply to nearly all RB 6x7 lenses with between the lens shutters. There will be some minor variances from lens to lens, but for the most part, it does apply. This particular 90 millimeter lens is suffering from slow shutter speeds that either hang up or drag excessively. The nameplate will need to be removed, and as often the case with these lenses, the nameplate will spin out with the filter ring. This creates a problem because the filter ring will not clear the lens assembly. The nameplate ring and the filter ring must be separated. If your hands are not strong enough to hold the filter ring while you apply the friction wrench to the nameplate, you will have to use an appropriately sized banded friction ring on the housing of the filter ring while you apply the torque with the friction stopper to the nameplate ring. This nameplate ring is being exceedingly stubborn and not responding to the torque of the friction stopper. After setting the front of the lens down on a heating pad for over a half an hour to no avail, some spanner holes were drilled off camera, enabling the application of the extra torque supplied by a spanner wrench. Isopropyl alcohol seeped around the threads might help the nameplate ring break free. The spanner wrench will need to be sturdy as it requires a tremendous amount of torque to finally break this free. And when it finally goes, a big sigh of relief is in order. Phew! Now remove the lens group itself. Two spanner slots accessed on the edge of the lens will facilitate the use of a spanner. Once loose, just spin it out with your fingers. As you lift the lens group free, watch for the spacer washer that lives underneath it. Now too, the troublesome filter ring housing can be lifted free. Four more screws removed and out comes the aperture ring retaining housing. With the aperture ring retaining housing removed, there are four additional screws that uh, hold the shutter dial retaining housing. Note the slot positions. This housing too shall be removed. Now flip the lens over and remove the back cover plate. Four screws hold it. As the plate is lifted free, watch for the release post pin. Next, loosen or remove the front housing screws. Remove the sink socket. At this point, a reminder is in order to take care to remember and mark the different screws from their location so at reassembly time you'll know which screws go with what part. At this time, inspect the contact for carbon buildup. The back housing screws will now need to be removed. Note that they are countersunk. Flip the mirror up knob into the mirror up position and separate the housing from the shutter assembly. Remove the XM cover from the XM lever. Remove the slide cover the slide spring, and the slide assembly. Remove the front shutter housing screws. Make note of the position of the spring plate under one of the housing screws. Remove the shutter housing. Study the shutter speed cam plate in relationship to the shutter speed stop detent and the shutter speed uh, high uh, slow speed cam followers and the high speed. 
Remove the retainer for the shutter speed cam plate and carefully lift the plate free. Do not disturb the shutter wind gears. Make a scribe mark in case they should separate. In this particular shutter, the slow speed escapement is intact, so the speed cam plate will go back into position so as not to risk losing the timing on the shutter wind gears. This particular escapement does not usually have lubricant in it, so what we're going to do is we're going to flush clean it with alcohol, tipping the lens in such a position so that the alcohol drains away via gravity away from the shutter blades. Once this is done thoroughly, let the lens set for 24 hours. If the flushing procedure went well, the next day the shutter speeds will work perfectly. Otherwise, do it again. Begin the reassembly procedure by installing the, the shutter cover plate, remembering to install the spring plate in the proper position. Next comes the slide, the slide spring, and the slide cover. The XM control slide cover and the housing itself can be installed. Seat the shutter assembly into the housing completely and install the screws. At this point in the reassembly procedure, the sink socket spacer and the sink socket can be installed. Before reinstalling the cover housing, make sure that the uh, cable release plunger is still in place. The sliding release pin spring plate and the sliding release pin will need to be put into position along with the housing. With the four countersunk housing screws tight and the release pin in place, install the cover plate. Maybe check the slow speed a couple more times for good measure. Install the aperture control ring, taking care to link the aperture control fork with the aperture control post. Align the screw holes and proceed. Next comes the shutter control ring. It too needs to be linked up properly. Double check the alignment of all the rings and then install the housing retainer. With the screws installed, give the lens a twirl, make sure everything is aligned as it should be. And with that, install the filter ring housing. And almost finally, the lens assembly with the spacer washer in place. And finally, that stubborn nameplate ring. Take advantage of the newly drilled holes to use the spanner to tighten it. Although the cosmetics on this lens isn't that big of a deal since it's a lens meant to be used, a little touch up on the newly acquired spanner holes wouldn't hurt. Thank you for watching. Inspired? Check back for new video postings.